Let's talk about Fleming's left-hand rule and the motor effect. This question, we've got a current carrying wire in between two magnetic poles. It says, explain why there is a force on the wire when there's a current in the wire. So one thing we need to know about currents and electric currents is that when they're flowing, there are these tiny little magnetic fields in a circular pattern around them. Now, that is also um, in addition to the magnetic field between the north and the south pole. So we've got to talk about both of those things to be able to get our marks in this question. So we'd say something like the current in the wire produces a magnetic field. Then we'd say this uh, interacts with the permanent magnetic field. So that means the one between the north and the south pole. Now the next bit is about how we could predict the force on the wire. So we get marks just for saying, like, use Fleming's left-hand rule, then describing basically what it is. So using Fleming's left-hand rule, um, if you don't know what this is, listen up. So you've got three fingers on your left hand, two fingers on your thumb technically. Um, the first finger is the points in the direction of the field. The second finger points in the direction of the current, and that means a thumb is in the direction of the force. Some people remember it as F for force, B for magnetic flux density or field, and I for current. Okay, whichever way you want to remember it, you've just got to remember which way around they are. So we'd say, um, basically place um, what I've just done essentially. So thumb, uh, first finger, and second finger perpendicular to each other or at right angles to each other. And then you just say what each one represents. So you'd say um, the thumb, oh, sorry, that's the first finger is the field direction. Second finger is the current direction, and therefore your thumb will point in the direction of the force on the wire. And so direction of force. Um, now weirdly, the mark scheme in this question, you don't actually need to work out the direction of the force, but let's do it anyway. So if I've got finger, first finger going in north to south that direction, my second finger needs to point sort of that way. So I'll twist my hand so that my second finger middle finger points that way. You should find if you do this with me, your thumb points down. So in this case, it does actually point in a downwards direction.